Hey everyone, it's Laura Myers for CMS Connected here with Jake Damari, the head of marketing at Luminous Labs. Thanks for sitting down with us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Perfect, Laura. absolutely. So first I'd like to know your thoughts on the event. Well, I think this has been great so far. I mean, um, Luminos Labs is, uh, we're exclusively an EpiServer digital commerce partner when we are very focused on the digital commerce uh, aspect of, we don't, we don't take CMS projects, um, um, you know, that, that's our thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've, we've been coming to this event year, over, year after year. And I think the most exciting thing this year is that you really see EpiServer making good on the promises as far as their roadmap is concerned. Mm -hmm. right? the, all these products you know, are coming online piece by piece. And I think that was really smart um, you know, to, to take it a chunk at a time, pull it together, and in the background, everything is integrated. Mm -hmm. So you can um, you know, come up with some personalization in Perform and, and use that same data someplace else, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, personalized find. It's impressive. Um, the other thing, you know, I, I just, in general, I've, you know, obviously, you know, as I said, we're an exclusive partner, we love EpiServer, but when you think about some of the bets they've made, like um, Perform, for instance, AI-driven product recommendation. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest problems that we've seen, you know this, year after year after year, people are buying into these big uh, experience platforms. You know, no matter what company we're talking about behind the technology, mm -hmm. um, the experience platform itself is, it's like a box of Legos. You pour it out onto the table and you're like, what do I do with this? So EpiServer says, hey, here's a, here's a case study that makes a lot of sense. Um, product recommendations, super important. You can show results from that. Throw some AI behind it and, and get it to work and, and, and be very practical about it and mm -hmm. put it out and go to market that way. And it was a big hit, no surprise. Right? People are using it and they're getting results. Mm -hmm. and so um, I think 2018 is gonna be really exciting. Um, I, I'd love to hear uh, you know, that part of the strategy for this year is to say, okay, we're not gonna add a lot of new features now. We're gonna work on perfecting the features we have mm -hmm. and uh, helping people adopt them. Yeah. Which is a big key. So. Mm -hmm. Adoption is one of the challenges that we talk about, but are there other common challenges you're finding customers are facing right now? Yeah, absolutely. So um, challenges that are, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay focused on the customers that we serve. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of clients that are in uh, B2C retail. Um, and, you know, in that, on that side, um, and we, we have a, a tendency to, to work with the incumbents, you know, the organizations that have been in business for a while and they're starting to, you know, to make digital transformation a priority. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you know, you're, you're dealing with a lot of the, um, the typical challenges for organizations like that. Um, slow to respond means that, you know, they're behind the eight ball in terms of, if you're, if you're com comparing them with digitally native vertical brands, mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're, they're playing catch up, yeah. which is a tragedy because they were there first, right? And mm -hmm. so now they're, um, so they're, you know, they're dealing with that stress and anxiety. At the same time, um, you know, coming to terms with what digital costs today, always, you know, it's always a challenge. But people are, you know, the, the, the folks that we work with, I mean, we're fortunate to have a lot of, uh, a lot of opportunities and we can be selective. And, you know, the people that we like to work with are, they're not just, sort of grudgingly saying, okay, we have to deal with this digital transformation problem. Mm -hmm. They're enthusiastically That's embracing nice. it. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's a joy to work with that because yeah. they're realistic about what it takes. Mm -hmm. And and they understand the you know the most important thing in my experience is that digital transformation is no longer this thing that has a beginning and an end. Or you can mm -hmm. say, okay, we started our digital transformation and we got all the way to the finish line. We're done. Yeah. Right? It's not like that. Integrating a new uh, e-commerce, digital commerce platform into your environment is one of many steps that is just going to go on and on mm -hmm. and the changes are accelerating. I'm going to talk about this tomorrow at 3, uh, 3.15 here. Um, you know, who, like who could have predicted that you could push a button now? Amazon has these dash buttons, right? Yeah. I don't even have to go onto a website anymore mm -hmm. with certain CPG, um, you know, certain package products. I can just stick a button with a magnet next to my washing machine and push a button and, and stuff magically comes to my house. Like, yeah. This is the kind of uh, innovation that brands mm -hmm. are dealing with in terms of, you know, and expectations are set by the, the leaders yeah. in digital. It doesn't matter whether you're head to head with, with Amazon. Mm -hmm. Our, the customers expect that level of experience. Yeah. So it's just that's another big up. challenge. Yeah. 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 One of the things I'm interested to ask you from a partner perspective is we always talk about how to select a CMS. And right. one of the things that we mention is you really have to be careful about the partner that you pick. So how does someone pick a partner? 
Well, that's a great question. Um, you know, traditionally, when you were picking the technology platform, um, it was kind of a one and done decision for a few years. You might say, well, we're going to capitalize this project out over five years. So we do business with EpiServer today and then we wouldn't talk to them. That's no longer the case now, especially with um, this, the overwhelming success of Digital Experience Cloud. Mm -hmm. The vendors are also on the hook for a much uh, tighter relationship mm -hmm. with the customers. We have always been in that position because hopefully if everything goes well, we do a great integration for them. We do some great design work um, and then they ask us to do ongoing managed services, um, maybe you know ongoing strategy consulting work to help them get the most out of the platform that they've adopted and training and all this stuff. And so when you're selecting a partner, you're, you're, you are picking a much closer relationship mm -hmm. than your technology vendor yeah. in most cases um, and so at that stage you have to ask yourself questions like what's the cultural fit yeah is this the right price point for us over the long term yeah is this some you know I I, I, I probably read this in a management book somewhere at mm -hmm. some point in my life but it's a pretty simple test would I enjoy being successful with this yeah team yeah right it's not enough to just um, you know with that kind of partnership, you can't just rely on, are they going to get the job done? Because mm -hmm. if that's what you're looking for, you know, throwing a project over the wall and getting it done, yeah. I know for us, we're not going to be a good fit in that situation. But if you're thinking, oh, you know, this is an organization that I'm going to be, have a relationship with on an ongoing basis, mm -hmm. somebody much closer, um, you know, that's where we succeed. So Yeah, definitely that relationship is important. Yeah, so it's, you know, I don't know, how do you quantify is this somebody I want to be successful with mm -hmm. is this somebody I would invite to my mother's house for yeah, dinner exactly. you know it's there's a cultural piece which is a little bit softer obviously they need to align in terms of skills mm -hmm. right you don't want to pick somebody that has you know 500 um, Adobe experience cloud installations under their belt and no epi server installations if if you're an epi server yeah. that's the obvious stuff but I think also have you know ensuring that they have the capabilities that align with what you need to accomplish mm -hmm. that's kind of the biggest thing yeah, yeah. perfect well that's all the questions i have for you thanks excellent so much. thank you